They're able to see the evidence and understand the decision making really in real time, not after the fact, which is what happened here repeatedly, Tanya. Catherine Herridge, we thank you so much. You're welcome. I want to bring in CBSN legal contributor Keir Dougal, who is a former assistant U.S. attorney in New York's Eastern District, and CBSN political contributor Molly Hooper. Welcome to both of you. So, Molly, you know, we saw responses to this report from several important people, one of whom is FBI Director Christopher Wray, another of whom is Attorney General William Barr. They seem to be somewhat at odds with each other, not entirely, but they didn't, they weren't in completely on the same page. Would you agree? Well, well, yes. I guess it depends on who you ask. And if you ask the chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the House and the chairwoman of the Oversight Investigation Panel, they said that basically the Inspector General's report, quote, debunks the conspiracy theories about the Mueller report and the Russia investigation that President Trump and Republicans in Congress have pushed for years. But you talk to Republicans like Jim Jordan, sorry to jump on your question there, um, who basically said, no, hey, we thought we, meaning Republicans, thought they, the FBI, spied on two Americans. We now know it was four. The IG's report confirms what many of us feared, that James Comey's FBI ignored guidelines and rules in spying on President Trump's campaign in 2016. So in all the, in these 400 pages here, there's something for everyone. There, there you <laughs> go. And so, Kira, how do we square these two situations, which is that no, the FBI did not act with any political bias, it concludes, but yes, there were several instances of wrongdoing, some of which may rise to the level of criminal. Right, so I think um, the, there's a lot to unpack there, but um, at core, you know, we all have um, our own political beliefs. We, all, we come to work, and, and FBI agents are, are the same, They're just like everybody else. Their obligation, though, is to set those aside and pursue the facts and the law. Mm -hmm. And so I think the finding that... And sorry to interrupt, but yep. just to support what you're saying, the report did have several instances of FBI agents texting support of President Trump, because we'd heard about those texts of FBI agents who seemed to be more in support of Hillary Clinton, but the report revealed there were some agents and even some senior agents texting support of President Trump. So to your point of the fact that agents have political opinions. Right, I, I, we haven't, I, I don't think we've had a chance to look at them or put them up yet, but yes, it, it appears the reporting is that uh, the senior supervisory agent, the special agent, um, uh, in one instance was, uh, was uh, tweeting or, or texting Trump supportive comments. Um, that doesn't necessarily uh, bother me as a former prosecutor. Um, we all have our, our, our sort of our views uh, in private. And as long as we separate those and we get to work, um, that's, I think that's fine. Um, but that's an important point to make. Right, and so then how can we square away the misdeeds that were done? How do we explain them? Because some, Molly, do raise, uh, you know, are pretty bad, breaking the law. At least, in, you know, the doctoring of the email is one. Well, that, that's a big one. And I think that more going to Catherine Herridge's point, if you look at um, the statement that Christopher Ray put out today, he basically, he said that he's going to address something like 40 of the recommendations that are found in this report, and then he, he lays out four, um, one of which is essentially um, being more involved with presidential campaigns and giving them more defensive intelligence. So if, if they know or if they suspect, uh, you know, a foreign entity or foreign government of trying to corrupt the campaign, like, say, Russia, they will go in and actually talk to the campaign about that as opposed to just immediately def deferring to investigating that campaign. Right, and, th and that's an important distinction if you're, w we just talked about. Um, if you are falsifying a document, particularly one, uh, for any document in the FBI, but then particularly one that goes to the court, that is totally out of bounds. Right. Well, no matter what's motivating it, it's completely out of bounds. Right. So clearly, oh, and Christopher Ray said that he's going to deal with these people yes. um, in an expeditious fashion. And he did have sort of four new, you know, procedures he's outlining, changes to the to the organization that he's outlining. But he did start off his response by saying, we were kind of exonerated here, or at least the institution was exonerated when it comes to the, the motivation for beginning this investigation. Now, who was the agent that it turns out was not, you know, th there was a 
double agent uh, conspiracy theory that it turns out this report debunks. Correct? The, the myth sued? You yes, mean? yes. Um, the, this professor who apparently tipped off George Papadopoulos, um, there was some theory out there that perhaps he was a U.S. plant and, and, and was also working for the Russians. But apparently, and again, according qualify to the report, this according yeah. to the report, mm -hmm. um, that just wasn't the case. And, and that's why you'll see people like Jerry Nadler, Carolyn Maloney saying, you know, th th this basically debunks these cons conspiracy theories. And they say that these these discredited con conspiracy theories were attempts to deflect from the president's serious and ongoing misconduct, first urging Russia and now extorting Ukraine into interfering with our elections. Um, and again, that's that's the chairman and and two chairmen, one of the House Judiciary Committee, the other of the Oversight Committee in the House. Right. And, and they're the ones who are going to be pushing that that narrative that this this report, it debunks a lot of these quote unquote conspiracy theories that there was a some kind of deep state effort in the intelligence services to, um, as I think Peter Strzok, that FBI counterintelligence official, said in text to ins an insurance policy to make sure that Trump does not you know, serve out his entire presidency. Right. So, so we are also getting response, you know, as, as Catherine Harridge pointed out from Durham, and she said how it was very unusual for, uh, you know, because he's leading a, an investigation that is currently ongoing. It was unusual for him to make a response uh, immediately about a report that was just released as his investigation is ongoing. What did you make of his statement here? Well, I, I, I mean, I'd like to understand what he's actually talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is sort of a key fact. If the Maltese, prof it almost sounds like a like an old movie with Cary Grant. With the, but you know, the Maltese professor is he a, is he a U.S. asset or is he something else? That is an absolutely key fact. And um, Horowitz is concluding that there was an authorized purpose for the investigation. And so I, I haven't had a chance to, you know, to review, yeah, this you know, 400 this 400-page report. This Here is it just, is. Yeah, this is just this is just a the third introduction. Of it. That's right. Um, <laughs> the uh, you know, you, I think we can we can assume that Horowitz, if there's an authorized purpose for the investigation, Mifsud was not uh, a U.S. asset running up against the uh, the presidential campaign. Uh, Mr. Durham's statement um, raises some questions about um, his agreement or not with Mr. Horowitz, but I'm, I'm concerned, uh, okay, he wants to put a placeholder um, perhaps on our reading of this 450-page report, but I'd like to hear some of the substance Evidence, behind this. Yeah. What, what in particular? It could be a footnote on mm -hmm. page 230 mm -hmm. that he disagrees with, or it could be perhaps uh, something larger. We just don't know. It and sort of ends with an ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. dot, yes. dot, dot. Yeah. And, and I think that those questions, even though they won't necessarily be answered sufficiently, will be addressed this upcoming Wednesday when Lindsey Graham, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, holds his hearing with Michael Horowitz on this report in particular. Now, House Democrats, they're really busy in the Judiciary Committee these days. They've got a lot of work going on. Um, and so far, Jerry Nadler has not scheduled a hearing, and that has some Republicans up in arms, go figure. But, um, but we will hear from Horowitz in person, live and color TV. Um, on Wednesday. Well, understandably, there is reaction from both sides of the aisle. Yeah. And as we said earlier, depends on who you talk depends to, you, talk uh, to. you know, what the leading sentence is. Um, so let's first listen to Republican Congressman Mark Meadows, followed by Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal. It's not a good day for the FBI. Hopefully it's a good day for America if we've learned from this. Uh, you know, going through over 400 pages of report is long and laborious, but uh, there's more than enough evidence in this report that would suggest uh, uh, ma a major overhaul in terms of policies and procedures. Uh, some of the things that were highlighted in our briefing uh, not only support the, uh, the memo that Chairman Nunes put forth, uh, but, but goes well beyond what he alleged. And uh, I think, if anything, the American people will see that what Chairman Nunes, Jim Jordan, and I have been uh, describing for the American people uh, was not overstated, in fact, uh, was understated. There is absolutely no credible evidence of spying on the Trump campaign or illegal surveillance. Uh, again, this conspiracy theory 
that there was illegal spying or surveillance or that advisors were in trap is completely demolished by this report. My main takeaway is that um, the Trump false narrative about the investigation resulting from a political cabal or witch hunt is totally demolished by this report. This report completely decimates the false narrative spread by President Trump and the far right that political bias or anti-Trump motive started the campaign or played a part in conducting it. So two clearly different readings on this report. Is this what we should expect from both sides in the coming days, Kier? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. Um, you know, the hard part is, you know, we all really ought to form our own conclusions about this stuff. Sure. The difficult part is it's 450 pages long, and we've all got, you know, lots of stuff to, um, you know, t to be doing. Um, the, I guess